Hey there, what's up? It's Johnny here and welcome to another episode of the 3C Show, the show that's full of photography love. And today on the show, I wanna to talk to you about photographing macros in tidal pools or rock pools. I've just recently been in San Diego and met someone from the lounge, Jen, who took me down to some magical rock pools and I thought I would share with you some of the tools that I absolutely needed to get the job done down there. But before I get into that, I want to give you a bit of an update. I've been traveling around the southwest with Brent, who was here, but he's just veering over in the corner, <laughs> southwest of the United States. And we've been to some places like Joshua Tree, Mojave Desert, uh, Horseshoe Band, the Grand Canyon, and just created some absolutely amazing images and video. With, uh, we've got a new DJI Mavic that I've been absolutely loving and I've also been testing out that Fujifilm X-Pro2 which is quite an interesting little camera as well that uh, I'm sure I'll share my thoughts on that very soon. Alright, so let's get into the tips today and the tools that are absolutely essential for creating macro images in tidal pools. And the very first thing I'm going to talk about is the circular pool razor. So what that does, it just cuts the glare off the top of the water and this is absolutely essential. I mean the difference between having a circuit polarizer on and off when you're shooting through, you know, shallow water, just to cut that glare off the top of the water and make those colors of whatever you're shooting. I happen to be shooting um, sea anemones, which was absolutely epic. Uh, is just night and day. So a circular polarizer is a must. So one other tip I would recommend you do is get yourself some step down rings. And what that allows you to do is you can buy a circular polarizer for your biggest uh, lens size. This one happens to be a 77. And you can see I've got all these different step down rings that I can just step down and adapt to all my other lenses. And the beautiful thing about this, you don't have to go and buy 10, 5, 3, how many of the lenses you've got, different sizes, um, circular polarizers, you just gotta buy these cheap step down rings. And what's so cool about that is I don't have to carry less gear as well, which is absolutely essential. You know, the less, we all like to have lots and lots of gear, but when we're shooting landscape and nature, you know, everyone wants a lighter pack. So that's another good tip. Definitely get the step down ring. Circular polarizer, doesn't really matter what brand, honestly, whatever you can afford. Um, usually you pay more. You know, for the higher brands, this one has to be um, happens to be a Hoya. But look, you know, just get one in your kit. It's an absolute must. And the other thing about a circular polarizer is it's the the effect that it does. You know, is something you cannot reproduce in post. So it's if you're going to have one filter in your kit, this one is the one to get. All right, tip number two, and this is you're going to see. Oh, that's a bit obvious, Johnny. You need a tripod. Of course, you need a tripod. You know, you want to lock down um, on a tripod and you, it gives you a chance to turn on that live view and really zoom in on your live view and get the absolute focus perfect. You know, even with a macro lens at f16, you know, your depth of field is like, it's, it's so shallow. So getting your focus is really hard when you're shooting macro. So to make it easier, lock yourself down on a tripod and you're gonna find that it's gonna, you know, make your life so much easier looking in live view. The other thing I'm gonna to say too, is you want one that's got a very short center column. You see this one here? Because when you're shooting macro, you're often really, really close to the ground, okay? So my tripod's like right in the ground. You can imagine now, if I had a center pole that was like this big, my tripod's not gonna be able to get low enough to the ground. So make sure when you do, some drum tripods like this one actually has two types of center posts. It comes with a second longer center post, which I don't use, but if you're gonna buy one that um, has a center post, try and get one with a shorter center post. It's gonna make your life so much easier um, so you can get your uh, lens and your camera close to the ground, close to your subject. Boom, so tripod, sturdy tripod is a must. All right, the third thing I want to talk to you about is mine happened to be is a reflector and a diffuser. And you might be saying, isn't that a portrait thing, Johnny? That's not for landscape. But what's so beautiful about shooting macro is you're shooting such a small area. With this little tool, you can control the light that happens in that little area. So you can be out shooting in the middle of the day in the brightest, harshest conditions and still be able to control the light around the subject because it's so small. And these are perfect. So you can see how small they are, like absolutely tiny. These are ones are from Westcott, but look, you can pick up any brand. But you wanna make sure, and you can see this is nice and clean, it's had a bit of use. You wanna make sure you actually get 
a reflector and a diffuser. So you can see this one's for putting over the subject and softening that light and diffusing the light. And then you also have a white and a silver reflector so I can bounce a bit of light back into my subject and light one side of it and add a bit of interest. So you can see, pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cheap. All right, get some of those, they're good. And last but not least, and you're gonna say, uh, I think that's a little bit obvious. Obviously you need a macro lens, okay? But what I'm gonna tell you is, this one's a 60 mil. It happens to be for the Fujifilm X-Pro2 that I've been testing from Fujifilm Australia. And it's an APS-C size sensor, so it has a 1.5 crop, meaning this lens is now 90 millimeters. And I would say, if you're gonna get yourself a macro lens, no less than 90 or 100, mil 100 millimeters. Because the longer focal length you have, the further you can be away from your subject, which means you don't have to stick the end of your lens almost in the rock pool to try and get a shot, nice and tight shot on one of your subjects. So look, APS-C, 60 mil is okay, longer if better. You know, if I had a 90, if I had a choice to buy a lens for my APS-C, I would even buy the full frame version at 90 mil, and that's gonna give you even more of a focal length. Um, if I've got a full frame camera, you know, I've even ran on my Nikon system, I've even used my 1.4 teleconverter because these are all, the macro lenses are often quite fast glass. So my macro lens being a 2.8 on my Nikon system, it still makes that an F4 lens, which is still amazing, you know. So the longer the length a lens, the easier it's going to be to get your macro shots. So that's the cool thing about it. All right, and that's about it, man. That's about it. I'd love to hear any feedback or questions you have and other tools that you think are essential for making macro photography in rock pools. And like a lot of these things you can still use for other macro photography as well. It just happens I had to be down here in San Diego and check out this image of the urchin I got. It's just, yeah, impen. Absolutely love it. And that's about it for this week's show. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm having a great time out here in the Southwest United States, traveling around, seeing some of the most amazing scenery I have ever seen. I've actually hasn't spent a lot of time in desert areas. So you're looking at someone who shoots a lot of seascape type stuff in the desert and I'm just having a blast. It's absolutely magical. So remember, get out there in nature, try something new with your, with your photography, push yourself and it's gonna help you smash out your photography goals. And this has been Johnny for Three Colors. ThreeColors.co, the show and the site that's full of photography love, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.